because I was so surprised at what happened. I just like needed to take it in before I could even start to process what had just happened. Um, but yeah, I think after watching it and digesting it, um, I think ultimately it's very interesting where they decided to take it. And I'm very interested in where it's going to go from here. I think the most frustrating part for me was that they've been building, they've been building it up, you know, Grogu's story and origins for, you know, since the show came out, and we got the reveal of how he escaped, but there's, we still don't have the answers, right? Like, yeah, we know, we knew even before the episode that Grogu was going to escape. We knew that that was going to happen. We didn't know how, but we knew he was going to get moved from the Jedi Temple. So, it's like, we saw that happen. But, like, where it goes from here, you know, we still don't know anything. I mean, it's heavily implied that he's going to go to Naboo, right? Like, the, the Starship and the Naboo Royal Guards and you know, everything that happened there. It's implied that he is going to Naboo. And that is incredibly interesting. It's like, okay, well, what is... What does Dave have up his sleeve for why Grogu's going to go to Naboo? Um, and, I mean, ultimately, who knows what Dave has up his sleeve. But the fact that he's going to Naboo is... Who knows what's going to happen? You know, obviously there's a reason. There's a reason that it's a Naboo guard. There's a reason it's a Naboo ship. Um, the, the fact that it's um, at best, and you know, Jar Jar actor, and he's going back to Naboo. Um, and I mean, that's just really cool on itself. Um, come on, get up. Nice. Took me a few hours after watching that to remember the actor. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think that um, Catherine and I both saw him like, no way, like, that's, that's literally Jar Jar. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, the fact that Ahmed Beth gets to come back in that way after everything that he, you know, experienced with the prequels and all the hate that he got, and you know, the unnecessary hate, like, the fact that he gets to come back in that way and literally be a dual-wielding Jedi Master escaping the temple during Order 66. I mean, for him, that is incredible. Um, absolutely awesome. Um, yeah, and I think at this point, you know, your next comment about no hits, no hints. Um, yeah, I mean, it's it's very tough to even try and guess at what the story is from here. It's, it's incredibly hard. Like, there's really no tease. The only thing we know is that it's Naboo. And that's not even, like, confirmed. But just based on the ship and the guards, like, that's exactly... Like, I don't know how it would be anything other than Naboo. But... That's all we know. I mean, we don't know... I think another thing that was... You know, the first time I watched it was a hard pill to swallow, is why is Grogu getting the special attention from the Jedi, you know, from the Jedi protectors who were, you know, they saved Grogu in particular, but, you know, we see other younglings not so fortunate. So, like, what, I think there's there's definitely backstory that we haven't gotten yet that we're going to get that explains why, you know, why Grogu is of such importance where he gets to be personally escorted out of the temple, essentially. So, I think giving all those facts now, I'm excited to see where it goes from here. But yeah, on first watch, it was just so many. I just had so many questions. That's my problem. Is I'm, I'm, I think I need to watch everything twice before giving like giving it too much thought, and I just need to take it at face you know, face value. Um, because like while I was watching, I was just thinking like about all the logistics behind the whole thing. Yeah, maybe because he's the same species as Yoda and Yaddle, and like, yeah, I think that's ultimately where they have to go with it, right? But like, no one has specifically, like, it hasn't been made clear 
that that's true yet. Like, no one's come out and said, like, there's nothing been other than imp you know, implied things that have, have said, oh, like, yeah, he's a Yoda species, so that's why he's important. But I think it would definitely be nice to see, like, build up to Order 66 and build up to, you know, how they treated him differently than other younglings and, like, I think I saw something that was like, oh, he's like, you know, no one else knew about him. Like, they kept it separate, separate out of fear that if anyone knew of his existence, then that put, just puts him in danger. And so if they can show, like, Grogu's isolated life at the temple, I think that would, one, enhance Grogu's story, because it would be sad. But, like, you see all the other younglings playing around, and he's not a part of it, because he has to be kept hidden and safe. And if, like, you know, the Jedi Council and Keller and Beck are the only ones who know about Grogu's existence, then, then yeah, I think it makes total sense. So, yeah, I get, like, you know, cinematically, right? Like, why would you go into all that backstory and then show the big reveal of how he escaped? Like, I think from their perspective, yeah, it probably makes more sense to just give us the action Order 66 scene and then after we get that, flesh out the backstory that led up to that moment. So, yeah, I think now, after ingesting it and thinking about it, like, all in all, pretty definitely excited to see where it goes. Um, oh, nope. None of the time. None of the time. <laughs> I enjoy seeing many POV of the Jedi birds. Yeah, I mean, yeah. ultimately we're getting more Order 66 content, right? So, nothing uh, too much to complain about. But yeah, I think it's really not, for me, it's not like complaints about the story per se, just, it's just more frustration. It's like, I just want the whole thing. I just want to know the whole story. And it's like, yeah, obviously it's a TV show, so they got to give it to us in bits and pieces and you know, it takes time to produce and everything but it's just like as a fan as a diehard fan it's just like you want to know you want to know the story because you love it so much you care about it so much so you want to know all the information you can all at once and it's a double edged sword because yeah okay then it's okay wait till the whole show is finished and then watch the show it's like well absolutely not you know if you love Star Star Wars and a diehard fan, it's like, you're not gonna... It's impossible. It would be impossible to not watch any of The Mandalorian until the whole thing is done. Right? Like, that would, that would be an impossible ask. And so, you just gotta... just have to find ways to live with the fact that we're not gonna know the whole story until they tell it. Until they finish making it, so... <clears throat> but, yeah. Where... where I mean... Yeah, we've gotten Coruscant, right? We've gotten all the Coruscant content. But yeah, Naboo is something that... I mean, in the Battlefront 2 campaign, you know, if we see even post-original trilogy Naboo, and we get some... You know, we get a little story there, and you know, Leia goes to Naboo, which is pretty cool. Um, but Naboo's a huge mystery. Outside of, you know, the prequels. Kind of grind him, grind him up. <sighs> Grievous is swing so frustrating. Hey, if you want to play the OG Battlefront too, I know. Yeah, no, we were talking. I streamed, uh, streamed a couple nights ago too. And um, that's something you know we're talking about. We're comparing like the, 
original Battlefront 2 versus this one. And I think for me, the biggest, uh, you know, the thing that the original Battlefront 2 does better, in my opinion, is the, um, just the lightsaber combat system. Like, you have the stamina, right? You have the stamina bar, and then you basically can sprint and cut and slice people up. Um, all in one swift, smooth movement. Right, versus this, like, if you go, if you want to swing your lightsaber, you have to pause for an animation. So it, like, cuts the, the rhythm out of it. Um, versus in the original Battlefront 2, like, you're mall, you're sprinting down a corridor, and you just are sprinting and cutting at the same time. Oh my, boys. Don't die! Don't die! I'm gonna die! No! Uh, right before it's gonna cut to the ship. 38 kill streak.